we've got about four months to get Atticus completely ready to sail 3,000 miles. 1,000 to get to the Galapagos, 3,000 to get to the Marquesas, several thousand to get to New Zealand, so yeah. it's a lot of thousands. Uh. We are going to fix some problems that we have with our current sail arrangement. I'm motivated, so it's time to do this. Oh man, this freaking sail is amazing. If we're lucky, we're gonna have this rig going for like three weeks straight on our way to the Marquesas. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. So we are really excited because the way that things are looking on the horizon as far as lockdowns and borders opening up due to coronavirus, it looks like we might be able to cross this year. So we're just gonna go for it. And we're gonna cross what? The Pacific Ocean. <laughs> we're gonna cross our fingers that we can cross the Pacific. <laughs> we don't sink on this little boat. Ever since we bought Atticus, that's been, at least for me, like what's what I dream about. Like that's the ultimate goal. We've got about four months to get Atticus completely ready to sail 3,000 miles. 1,000 to get to the Galapagos, 3,000 to get to the Marquesas, then it's several thousand to get to New Zealand. So yeah. it's a lot of thousands. Uh. One of the big things that we need to do is make sure that Atticus is more or less ready to do a whole lot of sailing. And so we are going to fix some problems that we have with our current sail arrangement. One of the problems that we have right now is our head sails. They're hank on sails. Every time that we wanna go sailing, we need to take these relatively big sails out of the locker in the cockpit, carry them forward, connect them both to the forestay, and then kind of tie them onto the lifelines with string. We also have a hard time reducing the amount of sail area that we have up. If we wake up in the morning and we want to go sailing, the wind's kind of light, we use a really big sail, but then all of a sudden the wind picks up and that sail is way too big and we need to reef or reduce the amount of sail we have. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to bring that big sail down, which is a huge effort, swap the position of the big sail and the small sail on the on the head stay, and then raise the little sail and then tidy up and, and secure the big sail. If we're offshore and it's three in the morning and the waves are kind of big and the boat's moving like crazy, uh, that can take me 40 minutes, mm -hmm. 45 and minutes. if it's crazy out there, we definitely need both of us. Right, which means that whoever was asleep is now not asleep anymore, which is a big deal because when you're offshore for long periods of time, sleep is really valuable. And then the final problem is that uh, we do have some gaps in our sail inventory. The idea of having a sail inventory is that we can sail well no matter where the wind is coming from. With the sails that we have on Atticus, in light winds, we're able to sail very well if the wind is coming from right behind us, if the wind is coming from the side, if the wind comes anywhere in between there. But the one area that we can't sail well in light winds is if we are sailing into the wind. In moderate winds, we don't have the sails to handle dead down wind. And that is actually the point of sail that we're gonna be on for the vast majority of the time when we're crossing the Pacific. And finally, in really strong winds, if we are really hard on the wind, we don't have a good sail to, to handle that. So to kind of tackle these issues, we decided to call up Precision Sails and work on a solution together. They had us do a bunch of measurements, which was actually a really easy process. Mm -hmm. They had really cool videos online showing how to do it. We're gonna go inside of the shrouds here to the front position on the Genoa track. They had measurement forms that were really, really obvious and kind of walked you through every number that they were gonna need from you. So then we were able to have a couple conversations with a sail designer, Jeremy, over at Precision Sails. We were sailing up to Cuba. We got like a pre-frontal calm for like a good 24 hours. We were just like way offshore and just crawling along, but like I'd come up to replace Desiree on watch 
and it would feel like we were at anchor, but then you get up there and you're moving, right? And it's yeah. just so comfortable. And yeah. so I, I, I like the ability to have the sails so that I can weather route in a certain way. You see, we've kind of built your rig a little bit here based on the measurements that you gave me. I'm just going to place your drifter on there. That's what I think we should go with. I think that every boat, especially offshore boats, should have some sort of light air mover, making sure that you have everything that you need on the boat to, you know, not have to rely on your engine is, I think that's kind of the, the crux of being a good sailor. So after chatting with Jeremy, we decided on ordering three sails from Precision Sails. First is a 135 roller furled Genoa, a small jib, and a drifter. Now that we've got all three of those sails, the next step is to go install the Furlex roller furler that we got from Selden. Today is a rainy day. I'm going to see if I can't get this project finished today, rain or shine. It's less than ideal, but I'm, I'm motivated, so it's, it's time to do this. extra set of hands to help me out so I brought in the ringer. So now it is time for us to do the stay lock fitting and because there's gonna be uh, like thread lock involved and the threads need to be dry when that happens we're gonna need to make a dry space. I almost sat down and fell off the dock and just missed the whole thing. <laughs> that would have been funny. It does end right there. Right there. <laughs> Oh. Good work, John. Thanks for the help. My pleasure. <laughs> Good stuff. I can't believe this is going to fit on Atticus. <laughs> Don't say anything yet. <laughs> part where we figure out if all that measuring stuff works. <laughs> hey! Ooh. All right. That's yeah, fantastic. great job, bud. Good job, team. Yeah. Air high five. Woo! Yeah. Boom! <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it looks so good. It's huge. <laughs> I know. I'm very, very happy about this. Let's see if it furls up. Yeah, yeah, let's try <laughs> furling. Looks good, man. I'm going to try to see if I can install our re removable solent stay, and then we'll be ready to go sailing and try these sails. All right. You may remember that we installed these cheeky tangs months and months ago. And this whole soul and stay arrangement was designed by Caligo Marine. We pretty much approached them with more or less just what we hoped to accomplish, and they were able to completely design and build the whole thing. Here is our new Dyneema removable soul and stay. Basically, the roller furled Genoa is going to be the sail that we use probably 90% of the time, but sometimes we're going to want to use more specialized head sails. And that's what this sole and stay allows us to do. So let's stow it and see how easy that is. And there we go. It's stowed. So that's a lot of the reason why we decided to go with Dyneema or, you know, synthetic rigging is because removing it or installing it either way probably takes me about 60 seconds. And that was my primary goal with the Solent Stay was if it took a while to install, 
then I wasn't ever going to do it. But if it's quick and easy, then there's a good chance that every time that the wind gets real light, then we'll throw it up and use the appropriate sail. Okay, buddy, I think we're in a good position. You're ready to unfold the tunnel. Huh? Feels so weird. Oh, I'm <laughs> so freaking excited. <laughs> That's so freaking easy. And our Genoa's up. Oh my God. Here, let me kill the engine. And we're sailing. <laughs> that's, that's how easy it's gonna be from now on. To me, it's, it must be sort of like if you buy a brand new truck and you love your truck, it's an awesome truck, but it's winter and every day you need to basically dig your truck out of the snow in order to drive it. And now it's as if we moved that truck to Florida <laughs> and like I can just hop in the truck and go whenever I want. How's it look? It feels like a different boat, you know? Yeah. I feel like I'm on someone's yacht. <laughs> the Genoa here is going to be the workhorse. So this is going to work really well in moderate winds and in moderate to heavy winds, right? So the vast majority of conditions, this Genoa is going to work really well. The sail is actually designed to be able to be reefed using the furler so you can spin a little bit of the sail up and it effectively becomes a smaller sail. So the next sail we're gonna throw up is the drifter and that's gonna specialize more in light winds. sail is amazing. There's so little wind right now that without it we would just be crawling but with it we're booking it. It's a nylon sail so it's made out of the same material as a spinnaker but whereas a spinnaker is designed for going downwind this is designed for going upwind. This is going to allow us to take different weather windows that we haven't taken in the past. So when we're looking at the weather for a passage and we see, okay, there's only gonna be six to eight knots of wind and it's gonna be, you know, close hauled. Before we would have said, well, we're gonna have to motor sail. But now with this, we can take that weather window because that's gonna be a really enjoyable ride, right? When you have six, eight knots of wind, the seas are really calm. Okay, and this is our final new sail. It's our 80% jib or small jib and its purpose is pretty much for us to be able to go to windward in relatively heavy wind. This roller furl Genoa, if we reef it, it'll do a pretty good job, but it does lose some of its shape and so it's not super efficient going to windward. I wanted to have a relatively small jib for those rare, rare occasions where for whatever reason we have to claw off of a lee shore, we would have the sail to do it and to do it safely and comfortably. There's one other reason that we got it and that is to be a part of our downwind rig for when we cross the Pacific. Wow, looks good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So this is our new whisker pull that's pulling out the Genoa. And then we've got a block at the end of our main boom. So we push that out and we use it as a pole for the little jib. You know, it's not a huge amount of sail area, but in the trades, you know, it's blowing 15 to 20 all the time. So this is more than enough for that. And in fact, when it starts to get windier, we can just furl in the Genoa and just keep everything in place and just pull a little bit on the furling line, ease out on the jib sheet, and that's just going to reduce the overall sail area. If we're lucky, we're gonna have this rig going for like three weeks straight mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, on our way to the Marquesas, so. Well, that was a really fun day. Lots of sail changes. I'm ready to open up a bottle of wine to celebrate our new sail plan. I'm downwind and I can smell it. Yeah. It smells really good. I'm gonna drink out of the bottle. Oh, <laughs> I forgot man. myself a glass. <laughs> mm.
Mm, that is delicious. <laughs> yeah, I've been saving this bottle of wine for a couple of months now. It's gonna go down too easy, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun day of sailing and Atticus is just loving the new Genoa. And I am loving how much more fun and easy sailing is. hope you enjoyed this week's episode it is just me today jordan is actually working away right now finishing the episode that you just watched hey guys <laughs> so i wanted to take a minute to thank some of our newest first mate level patrons so we've got robert thornton filippo garini maraldi and next i wanted to thank some of our newest bosun level patrons so we've got greg and lisa repack s v naniola jamie nordquist jeff stennett george larson and Anthony and Amanda Davidson. And a huge thank you to our newest Yachtmaster level patrons, Charlie Stewart, and those are balloons. Happy birthday, Charlie. Ray and Murdy Betancourt, Roddy and Teresa Warren, Patty and Steve Jenkins, Stephen Carpenter, Dave Moore, Luis Gao, and Greg and Kathy Lafitte. And finally, a big shout out to our newest deckhand level patrons, Matt Holst, David Treese, Jessica and Christian Bond, Carlos Nobles, Aaron Riley, Kevin Klaus, Jack and Sarah Plain, Carlos Nacio, Mike Blonda, and Petra Wolf. So thank you so much, and if you are a patron, we will see you next week for our patron-only live stream, and if not, we'll catch you the following week for our next episode. Take care, guys. Thanks some of our newest first late, first mate. It's hot here. Oh, shit. Did I get sharp in my face? And a huge thank you to our newest... Jordan is a lot better at this. <laughs>